Hey everyone, Coach Sullivan here again from MGS Coaching Football. It's my 38th year coaching. I've either been a defensive, offensive, or special teams coordinator as well as a head coach at both the collegiate and high school levels. Uh, continuing here with uh, the dog family blitz package, I'm just going to go over when we tag stick to our base dime or rover dog call. So dime dog stick it rover dog stick it okay how it affects the rules which very very simple it's no different again than the go family as far as that is concerned but then most importantly why we would choose to no longer have four off a side and go with the stick okay so first just to reiterate here the dog family, we designate who the dog is. So in this case, it's a dime. So that's why the dime's in red. Okay. Uh, I didn't put the end in green. I probably should have, like in previous presentations, because the, the end is in uh, pass rush mode. So it would be a five man pressure. So please acknowledge that that's my mistake this end probably should be in green because if it's past the end will be rushing making it a five-man pressure and in this case the play the call side backer is in fact the backer that's why he's in blue so the only difference between a dog stick and a dog is there is not four off the side because we're sticking the defensive line okay so in the other presentation on the dog, dime dog, rover dog. The dime in this case is the dog. So nearest, uh, deepest hip or nearest hip if it's not pistol, right? This means automatic peel on a flare. Otherwise, you continue with the quarterback. C scrape, aiming point outside hip of the tackle, but you end up going butt side of the tackle. Okay. We're going to. Spin the safeties. We got to replace the blitzer on spin on the snap. We don't tip our hand that this outside backer doesn't hedge, alerting the wide receiver who then alerts the right. <laughs> it's a chain reaction, so you don't want to do that. If this kid isn't fast enough to blitz from here, then you got to get another player, and or you can't run it. I mean, that's kind of simple. Don't force your players to do things that they're not capable of uh, having success with. That's bad coaching. Okay, <clears throat> so the difference between the stick and a regular dog, the defensive end call side is in the A gap. That's the stick. Again, other programs call it a long stick. We don't. Stick means two gaps. So in the stick, because the defensive ends in the A gap, that bumps the nose to the A gap away from the call, right? So now it's only one, two, three off the side. So why would we do that? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Notably, one, if the protection is going to slide back toward the blitz, so from the opposite guard to the center to the guard to the tackle, so now, you know, A, A, B, right? It effectively, if we were executing a regular uh, dog, the nose would be blocked, the defensive end would be blocked, okay? The um, offensive tackle can now widen in order to get hands on the dog. So now it, it kind of forces our C scrape to be a little bit wider. More likely, they're going to be able to have a blitz beater or going to have something more on rhythm, okay? Because when they figure out and or they practiced for the spin down they'll have something to hit it in here before the safety can get there perhaps so you got to have a plan you always got to have a plan so a dog stick is our plan b so we can continue to execute the pressure okay so if they continue to do this what ends up happening is it makes it easier for our c scrape to get pressure or at least get in the throwing lane, get hands up to help get in the quarterback's vision and or deflect the pass. Okay, and now the guard's got further to go. The guard's got somebody crossing his face, which it's like the car wash drill with receivers, right? So that's why we do it, okay? 
for a pass situation. The other reason we would do it if we wanted to use it against the zone read or the RPO or the two-back power scheme, two-back ISO, is it screws up the blocking scheme for the run. It's a whole different look, okay? And then another uh, reason for doing it, if they're going to run, a, if they have a good running quarterback, and so they're going to use the running back as the lead blocker and run quarterback draw. If we're running a regular dog, now this linebacker is, is isolated here and he doesn't have any help because this backside linebacker is gonzo, right? So that draw, the quarterback draw could really hurt us. So that would be the reason for, for tagging the stick. Same if we're doing it to the rover, right? Rover dog, stick it, same thing. Okay, if they're able to slide the whole protection, it makes it a little bit easier for our C scrape, get hands, all the things I just talked about. But even more so, again, for that uh, lead draw, quarterback draw, but the two back power game. This is a whole different animal to block for the offensive line than having an A and a B right there. Boom. You know, they. Just like us, they like to practice versus certain things. So if you then give them a different look and they're not necessarily prepared for it and or they haven't been able to practice it enough or maybe their kids struggle, you know, who knows? But you got to have a plan B. Always have a plan B. And in so doing, you don't rewrite the laws of Newton to have a plan B, right? Don't make it complicated. So that's all we do. We just add the stick tag to it. It only affects the two defensive linemen. It doesn't affect anybody else, and I do mean anybody else. So, again, same thing here. The stud should be green as it would be a five-man pressure. So, you know, that's on me. So, okay. So, again, as always, if you have any questions, please, please email me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com. I'll I get back to you. We can set up Google Meets. I mean, the whole deal. That's what this is about, football. Okay. All right. Hope you have a great day.